The ocean covers 70% of the Earth's surface. It generates over half of the oxygen we breathe every day. Some of the most biodiverse places on Earth are found in the ocean's coral reefs. As a society, we depend on the ocean. 40% of the global population lives within 60 miles of a coastline, and 70% of coastal communities rely on fish as their main source of protein. Why then are we treating the ocean like a garbage dump? Every year, more than 8 million tons of plastic wind up in the ocean. You've probably seen the photos. Our consumption of plastic has gotten out of control. One ton of plastic enters the ocean every four seconds. So you can only imagine how big an impact that would eventually have on the ocean. We're not talking about a bottle here and a Snickers wrapper there. It's just a barrage of plastic constantly entering our ecosystem. Plastic bags, bottles, utensils, wrappers, almost everything we use comes with a plastic companion. The biggest plastic offender is single-use plastic. This is the stuff that we use once, then throw away. Think about what you had for lunch today. Did you get takeout? What did you do with the plastic container when you were done? We are addicted to plastic. There's this weird dependence on having all these disposable products available all the time. And it's really changed the way that we go through the world and consume things. Americans use 500 million straws every day. We collectively use 100 billion plastic bags every year. Each bag is used for an average of 12 minutes before it gets sent to the landfill where it takes 500 years to degrade. But how does this plastic get from here to here? There's a few different ways that plastic ends up in the ocean. One is just a lot of garbage cans are open, so the things just blow out. That's more of a problem actually in places where there's not a lot of infrastructure for garbage collection. So in Southeast Asia, 20, 30% of the plastic that they use can end up washing into the sea. But it's sort of ironic because the reason they don't have that infrastructure is because they didn't need it until now when Western corporations have inundated their markets with all these disposable plastic materials. By 2050, it's predicted that the amount of plastic in the ocean will outweigh the amount of fish, and that poses a huge threat to wildlife. So how did we get here? Let's rewind. Plastic is an incredibly recent invention. Plastics will play as large a role in peace as they do in war. For today, plastics are changing the appearance of our everyday world. In the 1950s, plastic was this revolutionary material because it was flexible, versatile, and durable. Cosmetic containers and cockpit housings, radios and razors, all contain plastics. From just 15 million tons of plastic in 1964, there were over 300 million tons produced in 2014. That's a 20-fold increase in plastic production in just 50 years. Where is all of this plastic now? A single plastic bottle takes about 450 years to break down completely, which means that every single piece of plastic that was ever made is still with us today. A plastic water bottle will break down from the salt and the sun and the water into tinier and tinier pieces, which scientists call microplastic and then that kind of stuff gets eaten by fish and starts to get incorporated into the food chain. We don't want to be eating plastic, but when we eat fish that eat plastic, we're eating plastic. In 2014, two Belgian researchers concluded that the average European seafood consumer could be eating 11,000 microplastics every year. So when people think about the Pacific garbage patch, it's not like lots of water bottles that you can see. It's just a high density of really small pieces of plastic, which actually makes it a harder problem because you can't just scoop it up.
So there are basically two things that we can do to deal with all this plastic. One is clean it up, and the other is stop making so much of it. There's a lot of organizations all over the world organizing beach cleanups, but they're gonna have to do beach cleanups forever if we keep producing all this trash. There's also efforts to collect trash before it enters the ocean, like Mr. Trash Wheel in Baltimore Harbor. What we really need to change is our culture of disposable plastic. Take a look at the plastic you use on a daily basis. How can you replace those plastic items with reusable alternatives? Try bringing your own bags and containers to the supermarket next time you go shopping. And when you order takeout, tell them, hold the plastic. So there's a lot we can do as individuals, but I think there's also a lot that we really need to be pushing corporations to do to change the way that things are packaged so that the plastic packaging is actually recyclable. Governments also have a role to play in reducing plastic waste by placing taxes on plastic bags or banning them altogether. So we're seeing a lot of movement in the right direction, but we need a lot more and a lot faster. Plastic pollution is not the only crisis the ocean is facing. It's not impossible to live without plastic. We've done so for thousands of years. Do we have the courage to stand against this plastic tide and say no to our addiction?